Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of The Watch Monkey. <clears throat> and uh, today, what I'm going to be doing is just kind of going through my collection of watches that I have currently. Uh, it's constantly changing. You're going to find, too, as you uh, get into this hobby a little bit more, your tastes and likes are going to change as well. Um, but anyway, um, let's go through some of the watches that I have. If you guys have got any questions about any of the watches that I have or whatever, just let me know. I'm happy to share my knowledge with you guys. And if you've got some information that uh, you feel that I could use, I'm always happy to listen. All right, guys. So I'm going to flip the camera around shortly. Okay, I'm back and the camera is now flipped around. I guess you weren't expecting that. But anyways, okay, here we go. So no more kidding around. Uh, here's just a quick pan of the, the watches that I have. This is where also I do the videoing of uh, the reviews on the watches. So let's start off with my pocket watches. Now, I love pocket watches. And for those of you uh, that are getting into the hobby, I would really recommend that you start looking into pocket watches. Extreme value in these. They, they go for relatively uh, inexpensive uh, prices considering the amount of work and detail that's put into them. To make these type of watches now would run you in the thousands of dollars. But anyway, I'm just going to quickly talk a little bit about them. So here, uh, this uh, first one here is my Hamilton. And uh, it's one of the first pieces that I picked up. Actually, I've got two Hamiltons here. Uh, this one is actually the more expensive of the two, even though it's very simple and plain. Uh, it's a military uh, watch. That was uh, used back in uh, World War II. So anyway, uh, it works great, still runs fine, never serviced here. Now I've already taken the time to take the, uh, the back off of this so you can see what I mean by the exquisite detail that goes into these watches. So I'm just going to flip it over and you can see here, you know, it's very impressive. You know, all the detail work that's done in these and so on. And uh, you can see there it's marked Hamilton Watch uh, Company, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, 17 jewels. Yeah, what a great piece. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's uh, one of my favorite pocket watches for sure. I'm just going to put that down for now. Here, this was interesting too. I found this on eBay. Picked it up for, I think it was like $50, $60, which was a crazy good deal. And this is a manual wind pocket uh stopwatch sorry not a pocket watch so and it's a single pusher so what that is is you push that button down and you can see it starts the pocket watch and you have the minute counter uh in that small hands there and when you stop it you just press down and then to reset it you just press again and it flies back to the zero position uh just a great piece uh that was a bargain i love this thing you're going to find me saying that a lot, that I love this, love that. That's, I guess, why I got these watches. Here's another Elgin. Now, this was a learning experience. I picked up this one uh, relatively inexpensive. I think I picked it up for about $300. But then I had to spend another $350 to get it serviced because it stopped working. And uh, I guess one of the jewels had fallen out and they, were, they had to replace the keeper for the jewel. And that was kind of fun trying to locate that. But if you're going to get one, try to get one that's working. Uh, better yet, if one that's got uh, had a recent service on it, and you can actually verify that service. That's important because it's easy enough to say it's been serviced and have no proof. So that's the Elgin. Down. Now, here's a real... This is the oldest watch or pocket watch that I have. And I picked this up when I was in Turkey. And uh, this thing is made in the... Uh, late 1800s and it's a j dent it's uh you can see it's got a key here to wind it and uh, i'm not going to open up the watch I'm, unfortunately i'm filming this on my own today so i'm holding the iphone in one hand and uh, the watch is in the other so that's a j dent that was made in the late 1800s so now we'll go to what i refer to as my big boy watches so these watches here are on the large side for sure but they're cool, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about them. So here we got a Swiss Army, which typically I would have never been interested in. But the reason why I got this was the price was a very good price, and it has the ETA 6498 movement, which is a hand-wound 
Very respected movement. Actually, the 6498 and the 6497 are two of my favorite movements. Now, the difference between the 6498 and the 6497 is that the 6498 has the uh, seconds at the 6 o'clock position and the 6497 has it at the 9 o'clock position. So that's the real only difference between the two movements. But yeah, if you can get a hand wound 6498 or 6497, I'd highly, highly recommend it. Here's a watch that I've been looking for for a very long time. And that's the Pan Europe Chronograph. And uh, yeah, that one's one of my favorite watches. It's spectacular. Again, it's a little bit of a large watch, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a special one that's not gonna be going anywhere anytime soon. Now, beside that one, we've got another one that has the ETA movement again. And uh, this one here uh, is made by a company called Debefray, which is basically Steinhardt. Debefray went uh, under, they had established Debefray to sell Steinhardt watches in North America. But uh, a few years later, they closed their doors. So if you've got a Debefray, I would hang on to it. Uh, really cool watches. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna take the time to pop this one out. So you can just take a look and see what I mean uh, about the, the quality on these watches. So here you can see here, that's the back of the watch. And uh, it's a sapphire crystal glass, as most of my watches are, uh, as well as either automatic or hand wind. Uh, I prefer hand wind given the choice, but uh, yeah, that's a really great watch. And this one's really cool too, because you can actually undo the case. This isn't decoration. Uh, it's actually functional, and uh, what it does is uh, it it's, uh, holds down, I guess, the ca the top of the case here, and uh, yeah, fantastic watch. You can see you've got the uh, the keepers here for the uh, lugs and the strap. So I'm just going to pop that back in the case, and here's another really cool watch too, and this is the Steinhardt. Apollon. That's kind of funny too because Steinhardt's kind of got a bad reputation of being a homage only manufacturer, which is far from the truth. Yes, they do have homage watches, uh, many of them after uh, Rolex type design, but so does a lot of other people, a lot of other companies. But the real cool thing here, and it's a thick watch too, this one's very, very cool. You can see the quality. Um, but the really cool thing about this one is uh, it comes with three different bezels that you remove, if you like. They've got a black one, a, a bronze one, and the stainless steel one, which is shown here. And yeah, that's another watch that I really, really like. And they're getting kind of hard to find. Typically, um, if you're lucky, you can find them on eBay. They're going to go for around a thousand bucks. But yeah, pretty cool. And same thing with this one here. The, these ones will usually go for a little bit more than a thousand. Now guys, I'm, uh, this is all Canadian dollars. I'm in uh, North Vancouver, British Columbia. So just to straighten that out. Um, here, another Steinhardt pilot watch. Uh, once again, uh, I love pilot watches. You're gonna see a couple of them, uh, but uh, fantastic. They're large, uh, but again, they're using that a uh, wonderful large ETA movement that I love so much. Okay, so that's it for the big boy watches there. So let's move over to uh, the steel bracelet watches. And uh, you can see here just by glancing at them, uh, they're predominantly dive watches. I'm not gonna go too much into this, but this is the Heimdaller Orange Monster. And it's a homage to the Seiko Monster. Now, the interesting thing is I did a review on this too. It's actually better than the original, but that being said, it doesn't have the history. But this watch here typically is gonna run you a little over uh, $200, that sort of price range. So expect to pay between 200 and 250 on bracelet. Uh, very cool watch for sure. Here we have my Tissot Seastar 1000. Now this is an older one. This is from about 2000 and five is what I've been told. And uh, it's a big watch. It doesn't, it might not look that big on camera here, but the distance, the lug to lug distance here is a whopping 52. 
uh, that is large. Uh, anything over 50 is considered large. So that's 52 millimeters uh, from lug to lug. So that's a big boy, but it's a really very cool watch. And I'm just going to quickly show you here a little bit more detail on it so you guys can enjoy. You can see that the glass is pretty heavily uh, domed. Again, it is sapphire. And uh, I'll flip it over here for you too. You can see it's a display case back and it's running also an ETA movement. So uh, Tissot is part of the uh, Swatch Group, which owns uh, uh, Hamilton and uh, Omega and so on. Here, one of my favorite brands. Now these are really great watches and they've got a lot of publicity lately. And that's a Christopher Ward. This one here is the C65 Trident. Now this one is the automatic. I've got a yellow hand one that I'm gonna show you in a minute. But uh, the quality on this and the price point is exceptional. Uh, can't say enough good things about them. The case here is referred to as a light catcher case. Uh, very streamlined. The, the um, buckle and uh, the bracelet here is second to none. I've still got the plastic covering here, so I don't scratch this up. But it's a, it's a fantastic uh, buckle. Uh, what makes it so special, again, I'm trying to do this with one hand here. They have a glide system to do a micro adjustments. And so there it is there. You just pull those two little levers in and you can do the micro adjustment uh, for the watch. Okay, so that was the C65 Trident Automatic. I'll give you a tip too. If you're going to buy one of these, try get it at the beginning of the year. They usually have a big clearance type sale where you can get very good deals on them. Uh, here's another Hamilton uh, Jazzmaster. Now, the reason why I got this one was it's a hard one to find. It's a cushion back. And what that means is it's, it's not round. It is shaped kind of like a cushion, as you can see here. Really great watch. Um, very cool too. Housing again an ETA movement. So that's that there. I'll put that one down. Now here is a, a group of my Hamilton watches. There we got another Hamilton chronograph. This one here is the Khaki Pilot um, chronograph and it's an automatic using the Valjou movement. Here is a, another rather large watch and that's the Hamilton Khaki Officer. Again, it's housing uh, the large automatic movement. That's a great watch. If you guys have a chance to pick one of those up around the $500 mark used, it's a fantastic watch. Here's one of my favorites. I love this thing. I'm typically not into digital watches, but this one really spoke to me. And it's the Hamilton PSR. It's a relatively new release. And you can see here, even in daylight, you can still see the time. But at nighttime, I'm going to try again, do this with one hand. Uh, let's see if I did that. There we go. You can see it shines a little bit brighter now when you press the button. So fantastic watch. Highly recommend that one as well. Here I've got my Hamilton airplane. Now, people always ask about this. Uh, you, you, you can find these on eBay sometimes, but they're kind of expensive. They're typically between $100 and $200 for one of those airplanes. Um, yeah, let's see here. Now we got my Yonkers. This one's a, a great watch as well. I say that a lot, I know. And this is, again, an automatic, as, as it says right here, obviously. And this is a Bauhaus design, and uh, it's German. Great quality for the money. I picked this one up for a great deal, 500 bucks, and it was just serviced. The person that I bought it from spent about $300 just having it serviced. So I like this one very much. I'll flip it over for you so you can see the back. And I thought actually this was an ETA movement. It's not, it is a Solita. I've had that verified and that was, uh, you can tell by how many jewels are, are in this watch. So, um, but the, really the quality with the ETA and the Solita, they're pretty much on par. There's not a whole heck of a lot of difference. Uh, there's arguments back and forth for each, but very stylish watch. It's great for the minimalist and uh, probably one of my more dressy watches for sure. Most of them, my watches are sporty or dive orientated. Now here, okay, this one's not, this one's just recently acquired and this one's really cool. Now this is a, now most of you guys will probably pronounce it as Poljot. It's not, okay, that's not how it's pronounced. It's Poljot, okay, 
and it's a Russian word meaning pilot. So now you know how to pronounce that. Again, this is a mechanical watch. This one here, as you can see, there's no um, balance wheel on there. So uh, there, sorry, balance wheel, um, the winder. So this one is a hand wind watch. And to set the date here, it's a little bit quirky. There's no fast set. So you kind of have to jump around a little bit between the 12 and the 10 uh, time period. I will be doing a video on how to do that. But I think this one is a, a very good looking watch. So that is the Pagliot. And uh, another very cool watch. I'm a car nut, so, and motorcycle. And this one here is my Frederic Constant. <laughs> and it's the Canadian Healy edition. Uh, this was put out in, uh, I think, in the early 2000s. So not that long ago. And uh, what, a, what a nice piece. Uh, just know with, the, with this watch here, the lug to lug is fairly long. Um, but yeah, very nice piece. So there you go, kind of a little bit dirty in the back there. Sorry, guys. And uh, that's that. Uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, I had another Christopher Ward C65 Trident. This one here is the manual wind. Uh, this watch is, again, really nice. Uh, the rotating bezel is very smooth. Uh, this one is the new hybrid strap. It's kind of a rubber uh, sailcloth type material on the top here. And yeah, very nice watch. And the yellow really changes colors depending on the lighting. Uh, the case back, I think, is one of the best. Take a look at that. It's not a display back. And really, um, I don't think all watches should be display back. You know, one or two is fine. See what the, move, the movement is all about. But this, again, um, is, a, is a fantastic watch using a Salida movement, I believe. Okay, this is one of my older watches for sure. Uh, this one uh, I just picked up about a month ago out of Cyprus, out of all places. I picked it on uh, eBay. And uh, it was black. I, I don't like coating, so I wound up uh, polishing and wet sanding the case. And uh, it is a Fortis. And let's see if I can get that to focus. And it's called the Space Leader Hi-Fi Matic. Again, Cool watch, this thing is old. Uh, the reason why I like this, so I'm not usually into vintage type watches because most of them are small. This one is actually pretty big and you can see when I rest it next to the other watches, it kind of holds its own. It's uh, not a small watch. All right, this one I kind of got for shits and giggles. I'm not a huge Invicta fan, but they do have some uh, decent watches. This is one of them. Another one would be the Pro Diver that Invicta makes, which is getting rave reviews. Um, for the money, you can't beat these watches. Now, this watch, I just liked it because it was really funky. The price was right. I think I picked it up for around 40 or 50 bucks. Uh, it had a dead battery, and the guy just wanted to get rid of it. So I thought, eh, you know what? I'll take my chances. And sure enough, I put the battery in, and she's good to go. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, heavily domed crystal there. Uh, the... the uh, crowns here it's got three crowns it is a chronograph so again you kind of hit that and you can see the chrono starts to go and you hit it again it stops it and you hit that one there and it resets it so that's that uh, i'm not going to talk too much about this one again this is a, a re just a cheapy watch but it's decent it uh, looks good and it's a chronograph quartz as well and it's a jack mason watch and you should be able to pick these up on ebay used for about a hundred bucks if you pay three hundred dollars for this watch you're insane it's not worth it but for a hundred bucks grab it you can't go wrong here is a flieger watch uh, by corget i believe a uh, china knockoff watch that i picked up for roughly about a hundred bucks uh, and that i think included shipping i can't remember but Next to it, we have the Steinhardt, uh, which is a lot more money than this watch here. But this one is Swiss made by a German company. I'm just going to flip the watches over so you can see. Uh, you can see the layout is the same. So here's the Chinese one. And there is the real deal Swiss one. 
you can see that there's not a whole heck of a lot of difference between the two. When you have the watches in hand, you will feel a difference. Uh, the Steinhardt is quite a bit heavier. Uh, this one is a little bit lighter. Maybe it's the alloys that they're using in here. But pretty decent watch for a, you know, 100 bucks or so. You can't really go too wrong for that. Especially if you're thinking about getting a pilot watch and you're wanting to test out uh, hand-wound movements. But, um, yeah, the Steinhardt here, you can see it's, it's a, a nicer watch for sure. And it should be because it's about six times more expensive uh, than this guy here. So typically these watches, if you're lucky, you're going to get it around 500. Uh, but most of them are selling at around that $700 mark. And you can see the strap here too uh, is phenomenal. Oh, that's one thing I should mention to you guys. If you do own Steinhardt, uh, get your straps from Steinhardt. They are second to none and they're not horribly expensive. And the quality is among the best, I would say for sure. Uh, just excellent, excellent quality. So that's basically it for my watch collection. So if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, send me a message or an email or whatever, and I'm happy to answer them. I'm just going to quickly scan here again one last time so you can see the watches. There's my Hamilton memorabilia. It's kind of like my Hamilton section there. Now there is the sock monkey, not to be confused with me, the watch monkey. And I've got a couple other little guys here. You can check those guys out. You know, people like to give me monkey stuff. I can't understand why. <laughs> and then we got the, the protector of the watches. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. I didn't think it was going to be that long, but it turned out to be fairly long. Sorry about that. But yeah. Great to uh, share what my little bit of knowledge and my watch collection with all of you. Have a great day and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss another episode of The Watch Monkey. Bye guys.